Welcome to module 3.1, Getting Started with NextStream. This presentation is a part of the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit from CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection. My name is Dr. Michael Wiegand, and I'm a bioinformatician with CDC. This module is part of a collection of training materials and resources meant to help you begin analyzing SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence data. Be sure to check out the toolkit's other modules, particularly the case studies, which highlight ways that some state public health departments and laboratories have successfully used NextStream. In module 1.3, we covered the basics of building and interpreting phylogenetic trees, and we briefly introduced NextStream as a powerful tool for interactive visualization of phylogenetic trees. Now we're going to take a closer look. NextStrain is an open source collaborative project to harness pathogen genomic sequence data through analytics and interactive visualization. It's become a very popular tool during the present pandemic because it was specifically designed to aid epidemiologic investigations and provide real-time snapshots of evolving pathogen populations. There's a good chance you've already seen some of the many ways the NextStrain team has been using these tools to study and track genomes of SARS-CoV-2 on social or mainstream media. A wealth of excellent documentation and tutorials can be found at nextstrain.org, including specific materials for SARS-CoV-2. Much of that documentation is accessible to non-experts, but it can still be overwhelming. Therefore, this module provides a simple introduction to NextStrain and points to selected resources that are most appropriate to genomic epidemiology, the scope of this training toolkit. If you're on Twitter, I also recommend following the NextStrain account for regular updates. NextStrain is a powerful tool for many purposes, but especially for data visualization. If you have visited nextstrain.org or seen any reports from the NextStrain team, you will recognize this default three panel view, a phylogenetic tree, a geographic map, and a genome sequence map, which together provide a comprehensive look at your data. All three panels are interactive, so users can click through the visualizations and explore the data more deeply. For example, in case study module 2.1, Haley Yaglem walks through the SARS-CoV-2 genomic landscape in Arizona, illustrating how powerful NextStream can be. The example shown here actually tracks the spread of Zika virus, connecting the sequence isolate nodes in the tree to their countries of origin, as well as to the key SNPs in their respective genomes. Now, the gritty details of how NextStream works is outside the scope of this module, but we can at least try to explain how it works at a high level. NextStream has two main components, auger and ospis, which serve specific but complementary goals. Very simply, you can think of auger as the bioinformatics engine and ospis as the interactive visualization application. So the basic process flow looks like this. Genomic sequences are fed to Augur for analyses, either from a public database or maybe your local file server, and the results are visualized with Auspice. Here's a little more detail about what happens inside Augur. Uh, the key inputs are actually very simple. A file containing your viral genome sequences and standard FASTA format and a metadata text file. You can find specific format requirements and guidelines at nextstrain.org. The basic Augur workflow includes a series of common bioinformatics steps, like sequence alignment and phylogenetic tree calculation. Augur further annotates the resulting tree based on the supplied metadata and generates a detailed visualization file for auspice using a common text format called JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Open Notation and is just a flexible file format widely used for data exchange. 
This JSON format is a structured text file that Auspice then translates into the trees, maps, and other images, and importantly, allows the user to interact with those visualizations. This is certainly an oversimplification to provide an introductory understanding for the purpose of the training toolkit. I encourage you to visit nextstrain.org if you're interested to learn more about how these applications really work. A central concept in Nextrain is that of builds. You'll hear and see these referenced frequently, so let's stop for a definition. A Nextrain build refers specifically to a set of commands, parameters, and input files to reproducibly execute bioinformatic analyses in Augur and generate an output file for visualization, that is, the JSON file, that gets read by Auspice. This conceptual approach to data analysis is very useful because it prioritizes reproducibility. For example, you may have multiple comparisons, like these three listed here, that you run frequently. Each of these could be managed as separate builds and run at the same time. The snapshots they provide can be easily rerun as new sequence data become available. Each of these builds includes many steps, as seen here in the diagram on the right, but everything gets neatly encapsulated and standardized for improved reproducibility. The next strain team has developed a nice tutorial with templates that walk you through the steps necessary to conduct phylogenetic analyses of SARS-CoV-2 for genomic epidemiology. An outline of the tutorial topics is here at the bottom of this slide, separating the auger analyses listed on the left and the auspice visualizations on the right. The link is provided here and on the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit webpage. Similarly, the NAIR Lab website also includes <clears throat> a detailed guide to interacting with your data in the browser via Auspice, including things like revealing node details, highlighting key sequence variants of interest, and specifying date ranges within your data set. The link to the guide is listed here, as well as on the toolkit website. You can review a number of public Nextrain builds maintained by CDC and the SPHERES Consortium, these are calculated from publicly available SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence data, focusing on each of the 50 US states, Washington DC, and Puerto Rico. I encourage you to explore data from your area using the link here. These state-specific spheres builds, like the rest of NextStrain, are fully interactive. This means users can drag and drop metadata tables to highlight sequences of interest in the browser. For example, I can add a two column table of strain names and some fictionalized case cluster identifiers that I made up for this presentation. All I have to do is drop this table into the browser and then change the color by field to my column header, which I named cluster. And immediately the sequences are colored to my fictional case cluster labels. And all the other sequences of the tree are changed to gray. Now that I know the location of my sequences in the tree, I can easily zoom in to look at them more closely. And for example, in this fictional story, sequences from cases in these separate hospital wings are clearly related, labeled here in yellow and green. Importantly, any metadata that you add this way in your browser stays in your browser and will not become part of the tree visible by anyone. Just briefly, I want to also introduce Nextclade, which was developed by the same team as Nextstrain. Nextclade is a friendly web browser tool to quickly analyze SARS-CoV-2 genomes by performing a series of basic 
but highly informative calculations. You can simply drop or paste your sequences in standard FASTA format into the text box, and all the analyses happen right in the browser without the data ever leaving your computer. The next clade name derives from an effort to categorize clades and branches of the global SARS-CoV-2 phylogenetic tree into groups with standardized nomenclature. This image attempts to show the overlap between a few of the popular schemes that have been proposed, including the pangolin lineages, next clade clades, and gisade clades. Here's a screenshot of the next clade interface, which is very user-friendly. It shows the main analytical tasks that are performed on your sequences, including mutation calling against a reference genome, clade assignment, phylogenetic placement in a tree of representative SARS-CoV-2 sequences, and of course, some basic QC checks. Note that the method of phylogenetic placement here is significantly less certain than with NextClade. NextClade is best for a coarse, big picture view and clade assignment of sequences, not detailed investigation. The URL to NextClade is here at the bottom of the slide and offers a great first step in analyzing your SARS-CoV-2 genomes if you're not quite ready for a full-blown NextStrain build. It also functions as a good pre-submission step to check your sequences before depositing them with a public database like NCBI or GISAID. In summary, NextStrain is a powerful tool to analyze pathogen genomic data and is specifically designed to aid epidemiologic investigations. It has become very popular for SARS-CoV-2 because it provides real-time snapshots of evolving pathogen populations using both reproducible bioinformatics and slick interactive web visualizations. This module is intended only as an introduction to highlight key aspects and resources relative to the scope of this training toolkit for molecular epidemiology. A wealth of additional documentation can be found at nextrain.org. Nextrain is developed and maintained by a dedicated team led by Trevor Bedford and Richard Nair, and much of the SARS-CoV-2 work has been led by Emma Hodcroft and James Hadfield. This concludes module 3.1, Part three of this toolkit focuses on useful tools and skills to apply genomic data, and in particular, to integrate that data with epidemiologic and clinical data. Please visit the, the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit page where you can find further reading on this topic. On the toolkit page, you can also subscribe to our mailing list and receive announcements as new modules and materials are released. Thank you.